Hey guys, we just saw The Vault on Netflix. That's right, everybody. Is this Netflix heist movie worth checking out? Stick around, because we're about to find out. All right, guys, The Vault. We were looking for a movie to watch, and we saw this was new on Netflix, and we like a good heist movie. That's right. Yeah, so this movie, we got uh, Freddie Highmore. Right, we've seen him in a lot of stuff. He plays in The Good Doctor now. Uh, he played in, uh, what was the movie he played in as a kid? Oh, Charlie, Charlie and the Factory. Charlie, Charlie. The bad one. <laughs> not the original. Yeah, not the original. The John, yeah, the Johnny Depp. Yeah. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, right? And then we got Famke Jansen, who's played in a ton of stuff. You know, she uh, you know, she played in the very first couple of X-Men movies. You know, a bunch of other stuff. And uh, then we've got, what's that dude's name? Liam Cunningham, right? Game of Thrones, Liam mm-hmm. Cunningham. And he actually just voiced uh, Man in Arms and He Man as well. So he's we we, we start, we're starting to see him in some more stuff, and I like him. I think he's a pretty decent actor. Yeah, so. he's pretty good. I enjoyed him in some Game of Thrones. Yeah, no, I definitely like some Game of Thrones. So uh, you know, of course, I like Famke Jansen. And then we also got you might not think she's hot. I think she's hot. You got the hot chick she's that played the mermaid hot. in Pirates of the Caribbean. She's, well, she's hot, man. She, <laughs> okay, <laughs> she's still hot, but she isn't right? that good looking in this. Uh, she, I don't think. I, I think she's still hot. She still got it, man. She's Matter of fact, I was thinking as I was watching this, like they couldn't get a better looking female lead. I don't know, man. I kind of, I'm, I'm digging her, man. I'm digging. I'm digging I was her. thinking the same thing with the kid too. I'm like, what's? Can you, yeah, he's he, well, someone a little bit well, more he, charismatic yeah, well, he, or something. Yeah, well, I don't he, know. he's just kind of weird, right? He's kind of one of those weird actors. Well, that's that, why he plays you know, the autistic kid in The Good Doctor, in the good doctor I guess, right? Yeah, that that fits and that works. Yeah, Here, yeah. I'm just... Well, well he also played Bates Motel, but now in Bates Motel, I loved him, man. I, yeah, I didn't did, see it. I thought he did awesome in that show. I mean, he definitely didn't see that one. That show was awesome. But I thought he did great in that show. Uh, and But but he, he's, he's just a weird dude when it comes to acting, right? He just, you know, he always gives you that weird vibe with his characters that he plays. And, and sometimes you don't know what to feel about him, right? Like Charlie and Chocolate Factory... You know, even as a kid, he kind of gave that weird vibe, like you know, do I kind of yeah, do I like I this mean, kid? I don't, I don't know, know if he bought. He didn't seem weird to me in that. It's just I didn't enjoy him or the dad or Johnny. I mean, that was just not as good as the original. No, no. And you, why remake a movie if you can't make it better than the original? At least the effects or something like well, that. So, but that's very, a whole nother argument. Disney's very good at remaking <laughs> movies and not making no, them near as good argument, as the original. But um, so. I, I didn't really mind him, and I didn't really mind him too much in this because he's still playing like a savant smart kid. Which yeah, no, he, was. He, he fits that role. He's yeah. got that kind of look to him, yeah. so that's fine. But I think uh, the problem was they just did not have a, charis- a, a overly charismatic yeah, or a yeah. funny character to bring in some comedy or even someone that you like can relate to and go, I like this guy. He's the Han Solo. He's like the everyday guy. Right, You right. didn't really see that in this. Right. I mean, I mean, the thing you did see from, from Freddie Highmore in this was, you know, you could tell he would, I mean, at least he had that, that kind of stoic look to him sometimes. Like, he just, you know, he's a college kid, right? 22 years old, but he's super smart. One of the smartest people on the planet. Never really done a whole lot with his life aside from science type stuff and smart stuff. Yeah, he gets thrown into this heist and he not, he agrees to it, but he goes into it with uh, perfect confidence, right? He's confident that he can do this. You know, you never really see him, you know, overthinking it or kind of. You never see him doubting himself, right? You never really see him doubting himself in this movie. He, you know, he, he's just very confident in it. And uh, like I said, he's weird, but but he's still got that confidence throughout pretty much the whole movie. And even times when other people are freaking out, he's like, well, "Hold on now, guys, we can figure this out," you know. Yeah, and this movie starts off, his character is getting offers for jobs. So what we can offer you is a $400,000 starting salary. Corner office. Shares in the company. Team working under you. 400,000 <laughs> shares. So he, he's yeah, getting from, real good job offers. All banks, and he's yeah. kind of like, mm, I don't know if I want to do this. Yeah, and then his dad's like, son, what are you going to do? You know, you're getting all these awesome offers for banks. You know, it's time for you to grow up and get a real job. And, it's, and he's like, oh, you know what, Dad? Just nah, maybe I'll rob one of them. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> I mean, it's like <laughs> right. I, I did not think the setup was that good because the main character in this, um, do you remember his name? The guy who's kind of Tom. running the show. Oh, oh no, no, oh, uh, Liam Cunningham's character. I'm Walter Morland. I'm the owner of a salvage business, and I have a job over. I want you to help me break into the vault of the most secure location in the world. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember. The, I don't remember. Well, anyways, the he's he's the guy who's spearheading everything, but yet he's got a lot of money, so they're not yeah. really doing it for the money. Well, yeah. Well, he's not right, but I mean, some of the other characters they you know, might be kind of are, but 
Yeah, so Liam Cunningham runs his own salvaging business, right? So him and his crew, and, and most of the people who work for him are on his crew in the salvaging business. And so they go salvage, salvage shipwrecks, and that's how they make their money. And, I'm, and it kind of leads you to assume that's how he probably made his fortune, right? I guess, because he yeah. does say he's been looking for this treasure for 30 years. Yeah, so yeah, he's trying to find this treasure for 30 years at uh, some uh, old conquistador or a privateer. Yeah, and, and in the beginning, they're salvaging stuff, and they're trying to bring up like this treasure chest. And then as soon as they get it, the Spanish government swoop in and, and like and take, take it, it from, from right. And then they put it in a bank, and therefore these guys want that the yeah. coins that are going to lead them to, I guess, to the, the tre- ultimate treasure. Yeah. Uh, the, there's coordinates on the coins, so they're trying to get access to the coins that are locked away in this big Spanish bank. Right, and so like they're going to rob. And the it's bank supposed to be like coins. the the most uh, sophisticated, simple but sophisticated bank vault in the world, right? So it's not, it's not super high tech. The actual vault itself isn't. You know, it was made, and they said I think the 1930s, but just I guess the just how. The sophistication of it for the time was amazing, I guess, but in how simple it is. But for some reason, this thing is supposedly like almost impenetrable. I right? guess it's tried and true. Right. There you go. Yep. Perfect way to put it. So what do you think about the beginning of this movie, man? I mean, kind of. It starts off. It's kind of a slow burn. It starts yeah. off pretty slow. Um, and they're playing music and stuff, but it's not even music to get you amped up. Eventually, they play some decent music. Yeah, but yeah, like in the beginning, it, it's almost like. Music you don't recognize uh, is foreign music or something yeah. like that, and you're just kind of in like, and the dialogue is pretty low key, and they're just not doing you anything to get right. amped up for this heist that's getting ready to occur. Yeah, probably, and I'd say probably, I mean, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'd say probably a good, probably the first thirty to forty five minutes at least is just very, very uneventful. You know, it's just, it's just like things are the, happening, but yeah. you just don't care, really. Right, right. I mean, it's the prep work to get into the vault. And, you know, and what I did like about what they did with it, though, is is the fact that they had a lot of prep work. Like, in order to get into the big vault, they had to break into two smaller vaults to get the keys to it and all this stuff, right? So there are two smaller safes. And, you know, and, so, and so the way they did that and kind of the way they put the team together and all that was, was interesting. But it wasn't exciting, right? It wasn't exciting. It's no you know? Ocean's Eleven. We got to get all no. this crew, and the crew are pretty interesting. And even when they're yeah. starting to do the minor things to get access, you know, it's like all these heist movies have to like have a computer guy that's breaking in yeah. and getting access to the cameras. This movie does does that yeah, as well, right. and it's no different. But yeah. uh, well, it's not really exciting. But yeah, yeah. Well, and I, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head there. Like with a lot of other heist movies, you know, they're they're collecting the crew, and typically there's at least a few members on the crew that just don't get along, right? They're they're you know their personalities clash. And it makes for a good, you know, comedic, con- you know, comedic conflict, right? Where this one, like, you know, this one really doesn't have that. I mean, you've got one character that doesn't quite get along with the kid. There's no plan B. If we get caught, we're going down for a very long time. Are you sure you're prepared for that? Are you? But it's not. There's no comedy involved in it. There's no like real clashing between the two in it. So it just doesn't give you that good, you know, that good defiant vibe in there that, you know, that you get out of a lot of the other heist movies where you're like, oh man, these two just don't get along and yeah. don't know how they're And they didn't out. sell me on the concept of this is worth the risk because obviously yeah. this is Spanish government and everything. So if you get caught going to jail for a long time, yeah. and not only that, the vault itself has a countermeasure that floods. So anyone in the vault, if it's triggered, is likely to drown. Yeah. So that's like up in the stakes. And, and these guys don't seem to be thinking much through any of this. Like, oh, do I really want to risk my life and drown or right. be thrown in jail for the rest of my life when I got all this going on. Right, exactly. the, the reasoning doesn't seem to justify yeah, why well, they're doing. Right, and, and you know, and of course they kind of give uh, you know Liam Cunningham. You know, they're asking him why you want to do it, and he's like, well, because you know I I love the hunt. I have money. Then why do you care? I'm a hunter. I seek what to others is lost. We can't explain our passions if we did. Listen to that. A million people gathering to cheer for men they don't know to put a ball in a net. Unnecessary, unessential, but it means everything. That's passion. Right, you know, you know, I'm, I'm, you know I've been hunting stuff for all my life. You know, all these treasure wrecks and everything. And, and, and But my crown jewel here, this has been my crown jewel this whole time for the last 30 years. And I've got to get my hands on this treasure. And these three coins that are in this box have the coordinates to that treasure. So I've got to get my hands on those coins. And then when he brings the kid in on it, you know, of course, the kids just had like, you know, offers any of us to cut a right arm off for, you know, freaking, you know, making half a million dollars a year working, you know, for some major bank, you know, at 22 years old. And, uh, but that didn't appeal to him, right? But then, the, you know, he, he explains the reason this appealed to him is because, 
it's impossible. Yeah, right? That's like, his reason. Yeah, because he's a super smart kid, right? He solved every kind of problem that's coming from him before, so I guess they're bringing this impossible problem to him so that, you know, that, that appeals to him that, hey, I'm getting this impossible problem coming to me so I can try to solve it. Like maybe you should go work for NASA or something. Right, like right, 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 exactly. <laughs> it's probably yeah. challenge you just yeah. as much. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Like, try to figure out time travel or something, you know? <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I mean, but but the movie does pick up, you know, probably, you know, but, so about halfway into the movie, it finally does start picking up, you know, and, and it gets pretty good. It gets finally pretty... give you some ACDC exactly. and get That's right. stuff going. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, and, and then, you know, and then it kind of gets into the kind of Mission Impossible type stuff, right? Like kind of the first Mission Impossible when they're trying to do their, you know, little heist break-ins and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, so, so it gets pretty good and it shows you, you know, and it gets to the point where you're really seeing there is real skin and real danger in the game, right? Like they're, you know, these guys are really putting their lives at risk here, and you know, and it shows you that through it. And uh, so, you know, so there's there's a couple good scenes in there where you get a little bit of uh, a little bit of that feel to it. So I like how they, you know, eventually get you to that point. You know, it took them a while to get there, but they finally do, which made for a decent movie. There's some usual tropes in this thing where people are crawling through air vents. Yeah. Um, like most heist movies, this could easily been mitigated if you have like a guard or so at the actual vault. Right. Like these guys have like maybe a whole platoon plus like 60 soldiers like on standby in case right. anything goes wrong yeah. with this bank, which for one seems kind of odd to begin with. They're, they don't even seem like they're security guards. They're like no crap soldiers. Oh, no, no, they are. They're, they're, <laughs> flat, they're flat out the Spanish soldiers. Yeah. yeah. And, and then they have all these guys, but none of them are like watching the actual vault. Right, right. There's nobody in the vault. Area. And even right. there's an alarm going off the vault and yeah. they're like way away. I'm like, why didn't you just position people, people the at vault, the right. vault? Now, now, granted, the vault's underground and it's like several, you know, meters, you know, stories down underground. So, you know, so it's kind of, it's almost like in this bat cave looking type area, right? So, you know, I, I guess that's kind of how they can explain why they don't need, you know, so, you know, soldiers down there. Plus, in order to get to the vault, there's this huge bridge, but you got to flip a switch to bring the bridge across. And of course, if you do that, it's going to set up a sensor. Yeah. So you can't do that. So, Another typical thing, they go yeah. through like the sewers and are able to get underneath thing. Again, right. there's no countermeasures or security or underneath nothing it. going on <laughs> for that. <laughs> like it, like they didn't even seal the room up with concrete or something and and prevent access to that or whatever. You yeah, know, yeah. like they're thinking so many things through, but there's so many holes. Like you thought all these things through with this bank and security, and they have like this ve very like anal uh security director and right. he's always like we gotta do this right. like you're like calm down all right, right no right, one's right. robbing the bank yeah right um but they don't think to put a guard there yeah well, and, and, and they play it that i guess he's a retired uh former uh ct director for spain right he's like a spanish ct director he retired you know uh counterterrorism yeah, he retires and then gets his job as the head uh you know security guy at the bank right so he's so of course i mean I, I guess that, you know, if somebody was able to break in and steal something, that would ruin his reputation, right? He's the head of the counter threat department, you know, for the, you know, for the government. And now he's the head of security at this, you know, big, powerful bank. So, yeah, I guess somebody got in there and broke in. It would totally ruin his credibility of, you know, I guess what he's built himself up to. But at the same time, yeah, man, they just make him way overly anal, I think, you know, compared to what you expect. Yeah, and I mean, that adds to this because, like, he really thinks something's going on and then they have to find ways to get around it. Yeah, exactly. Calling in old favors from MI six and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And one last thing too, right? So one of, one of the guys on on Liam Cunningham's crew is a retired MI six guy, right? So that's kind of you know that kind of plays a factor in this movie. And Famke Jansen is like a big wig at MI six. So her, and, you know, and, and you know, of course, Liam Cunningham is is a you know an English citizen. So he's talking to her because the original deal was that you know he would get his hands on this treasure and give fifty percent of it to the crown. Right, and then he would get to keep fifty percent, and you know, so I'm not getting, you know, we're not going to get into the, in, you know any details on what happens with all that, but 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 all that plays into this. Yeah, I would just have liked to see a more typical reason for them to go after it. Like maybe um, the main character's family is tied to the treasure or something, so he feels like that's his, right? Something right. like that instead of like I just want it because I enjoy hunting stuff and and this excites me right. <laughs> and I have a passion for it. Like right. what? Right, exactly. you know? and he's already rich to begin with so it's kind of like oh yeah he's loaded like what? he doesn't need the money yeah so i'm just mm, i don't know yeah but you know it made for a decent movie you know like i said the first half of it was pretty slow but after that it picks up and it, it, it for a heist movie it was it was all right it wasn't too bad so overall man what are you gonna give this movie i'm gonna give this movie a five 
As far as heist movies, I was not that impressed. Ocean's Eleven's much better. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> but obviously, that has the star power and everything else to go along with it. But um, the heist actual part wasn't that bad, but it wasn't. wasn't They, they just needed more excitement yeah. and stuff going on to, to get my interest. In no, no, I, do it. Yeah, I agree. They definitely needed more excitement. They needed more charismatic figures in this movie, I think. And I, it was lacking that. I think that if they'd have had at least one character on the team who was super charismatic you know, kind of a goofball type character to, you know, throw some comedy in there would be much better. But, uh, but overall I, I thought the movie was well put together. You know I mean? I mean, for what it was, you know, the actors did a good job acting. I thought, you know, I thought the acting was fine in it. Uh, and, uh, so, uh, it wasn't a great movie, but it was okay. So I'm gonna give it a six. You know, I'm gonna give this movie a six. I thought it was all right. Uh, just, just too boring for me. Yeah. Well, personally. the first half was super boring. Absolutely. But you know, once it, once it picked up, I was like, okay, it's picking up. All right. You know, cool. Now I'm kind of into it. Yeah, but it, it took you, know, you and I were talking when we were watching it at first. Like, man, where's this movie going? It's kind of not getting there for us. And then finally, it started to pick up. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm I mean, good. I feel like someone could have like watched this and and just made a couple tweaks, and it would have made huge improvements. Yeah, yeah. So, no, I agree. Um, you, you needed more charisma from the characters too, and I get like maybe um, the good doctor kid Tom or whatever. Like, if he's not going to deliver, I thought he did fine his role, but mm-hmm. you need something else, and no one really filled those gaps that I was wanting with. The, you know, normally you got a goofy comedic character. They didn't have any of that, really. Oh, yeah, so, exactly. No, um, they, they, they were totally and they, did, they that. didn't have, like, a, a pretty boy kind of... I mean, they tried to a little bit with the MI6 guy, but right. he was kind of like the hard-ass character a little bit, too, and it was just kind of like, I don't know. He, it didn't yeah. really work for me. Yeah, no, they they, 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 yeah, they they needed more charisma, for sure. Yeah, but uh, they didn't have it. And there were Which a lot of foreign actors, actors from foreign actors and stuff in this, so maybe right. that's it as well. Maybe uh, um, that's influencing me as well. Yeah, yeah, possibly so. Where they had kind of like European actors, so maybe they would appreciate that more than this. And maybe like right. the comedy and the tone is more appealing to them than it is. It is for us, me. right, for Americans, yeah. No, no, I agree. But uh, all right, guys. Well, that is our review of The Vault. Uh, you know, again, you can check it out on Netflix if you want. It's It was okay. You know, feel free to check it out. Let us know what you think about it. Uh, if you like our channel, hit like and subscribe. We'll check you guys in the next review. See you guys. Hey. Thought it was a vaulting good time. There you go. Oh, or Charlie. Like it was that. Charlie and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. That's where I remember huh? him from. No. Yes, he was Charlie and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Willy Wonka. Yeah, I was like, I was like, where am I? I was like, man, I saw him as a kid. Oh, he was in the Spiderwood Chronicles movies, too. Really? I didn't think that was that one. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, he was Charlie. I hated that kid. I'm yeah, you're trying to say that French chick's name. Astrid. Astrid Berger. Yeah, don't even bother. Astrid Berger Frisbee. <laughs> Frisbee. Take, I'll take that Frisbee. Frisbee. Throw, throw, throw that Frisbee right over here, please. I'll take that one home. I just want to say, Lee coming here. Uh, pretty high more. Tom Same. size more. Yeah, Tom size more. <laughs> hey guys, we just saw The Vault on Netflix. I'm sorry, I was thinking about the hot chick from the... She's not hot. She's hot, man. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I'm just going to say something. Yeah, more. just say something. It's after our, our show's over. That's going in the bloopers. That's going in the blooper. Damn, damn, Olympic bloopers damn, to, damn, to the vault. Damn, <laughs> They're damn, like, what is this? Well, they ain't talking about the pole vault. <laughs>